things everyone ignores in Elf. Elf is one of the best Christmas movies released in the last 20 years. The movie was Will Ferrell's first solo project outside of Saturday Night Live, and it was a huge success. This year marks the film's 15th anniversary. It's hard to believe we've been saying cotton-headed ninny muggin and following the three main Elf codes for that long. No matter how many years have passed, Elf will always be a classic holiday movie that everyone of every age can enjoy. With these insider tips, you can now enjoy it more. Will Ferrell had way too much sugar while filming. Kids all over the world got the wrong idea about the four main food groups from Buddy the Elf. Candy, candy canes, candy corn, and syrup. People from Canada may be used to putting maple syrup on everything, but Ferrell wasn't. Headaches and not getting enough sleep were said to be caused by all the sugar and candy he ate on set. Has Ferrell ever heard of a spit bucket? Candy isn't something you have to eat. Jim Carrey was the original lead. Since the story of Elf has been in the works since 1993, it's easy to see why Jim Carrey was first considered for the part. When he was making movies like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and The Mask in 1993, Jim Carrey was at the top of his game. Now it's clear that Will Ferrell is the only person who could play the part. Anyway, things turned out okay in the end because Carey made the best live-action Grinch. The North Pole was inspired by Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The North Pole set in Elf makes people think of old holiday TV shows, especially Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This is one of the reasons why the movie is so universally loved. Director John Favreau did that on purpose. He said that the movie would have the right mood if he could make it feel like the Rankin Bass Christmas shows he watched as a child. There's a long-lost elf hockey scene. Some scenes didn't make it into the movie, like in many movies. There's a long-lost scene in Elf where Buddy plays ice hockey with the other elves from the North Pole. The scene was meant to show how Buddy was messing up the other elves' lives. Buddy, who's very competitive, quickly turns a nice game of hockey into a fight. The scene that was cut can be found on YouTube, which is good news. Will Ferrell has Santa experience. That was before Ferrell played an elf. He used to play Santa, but not in a movie. It took place in a shop. Before they were famous, Ferrell and his Saturday Night Live co-star Chris Kattan worked in a mall. Catan was an elf in a mall, and Farrell put on a big white beard for the kids. We're sure Farrell learned something from Catan that he used in the movie ten years later. They tried to use as little CGI as possible. Favreau had always wanted to make a Rankin Bass Christmas special, so he wanted it to stay true to the spirit of the show. For that, they had to use motion controls, models, matte paintings, and stop motion, of course. Executives didn't like Favreau's plan to use as little CGI as possible because they thought it would make the movie look cheap. We're glad he fought so hard for his idea because it worked out great. One iconic scene did get some help from computers. Favreau did give in to CGI for one scene, though, even though he tried very hard to avoid it. Bud, Michael, and the bullies got into a huge snowball fight that was made with CGI snow and snowballs. The round snowballs that Buddy throws at targets at high speed were added with computer graphics, which shouldn't come as a surprise. Still, people might think that these snowballs were so perfect because of the magic of Christmas instead of computers. The Jack in the Box scene was genuine. Buddy is sent to test toys by hand and has to do this for hundreds of Jack in the Boxes. This is one of the first funny scenes in Elf. Falling boxes scare Feral over and over in that scene and his response is real. The best way for Favreau to surprise Will Ferrell was to use a remote control to pop the jack-in-the-boxes by hand whenever he wanted. We're glad he did that, even though it was bad. The actor who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story makes a cameo. One of the most famous holiday movies ever is A Christmas Story. Who could forget the BB gun or the leg lamp? The man who played Ralphie Parker is back in Christmas movies as Ming Ming, the elf who runs Santa's workshop. It took people a while to figure out who Peter Billingsley was because he wasn't given credit for the part. Will Ferrell broke James Caan. Ferrell was the only actor on SNL who could get all of his co-stars to break character. 
On the set of Elf, it was the same thing. There was a scene where Walter takes Buddy to the doctor. When Buddy screams in pain after being poked with a needle, Khan starts to cry. There's a scene where Khan turns around to hide his laughter so he doesn't mess up the take. The epic burp is real. Buddy does that long and, dare I say, famous burp at the dinner table after downing a two-liter bottle of Coke. It was real, but not Will Ferrell's. The burp was added by a voice character who could burp whenever they were told to. That man played the role of Brain in Pinky and the Brain. One of his many skills is being able to burp for 12 seconds. There was going to be a sequel. Farrell has always said no to making an Elf sequel, even though he seems to be open to other ones. See Anchorman 2 and Zoolander 2. It was said that Farrell was offered $29 million to play the part again, but he still said no. Why? He said that trying to squeeze back into the elf tights would look a little sad. But the elf who's middle-aged might work. Fans will take anything that comes their way. In 2010, Elf made its way to Broadway. While it's not always easy to turn a hit movie into a Broadway show, Elf was a great example. The Broadway show ran from November 2010 to January 2011 and did well with both critics and audiences. Funny song names like World's Greatest Dad and Nobody Cares About Santa were in the show. The musical made $1.4 million in its first week on Broadway and has been back many times since, showing that singing loudly is the best way to spread Christmas cheer. You can thank Zoe De Chanel for all the singing. When I read the original script for Elf, I couldn't believe there wasn't much singing. As every elf knows, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Zoe De Chanel was cast as Jovi before John Favreau added the music and Christmas songs. He saw how good of a singer she was and wanted the movie to show it. The fight Buddy has with Santa had to be done in one shot. Bud and the Santa Claus who sits on a throne of lies and smells like beef and cheese had to be at the top of their game when they fought. It was impossible to clean up and reshoot the fight because it would have taken so long and cost too much. Building the Empire State Building took a long time. Now think about having to do it three or four times. No CGI makes for amazing souvenirs. Because Favreau couldn't use any CGI, he had to make two sets that were pretty much the same. Two sets were different sizes. One was small to make Buddy look like a huge elf, and the other was big to make the elves look small. Even though the perspective work was tough, Favreau said it was worth it because he got some funny mementos. He has a Louisville slugger that's four and a half feet long in his office. In one scene, the elves were making it. Favreau played multiple roles in the film. In each of his movies, director John Favreau is known to sneak in a few scenes. We're sure you knew him as the doctor who pricked Buddy for a DNA sample, but we bet you didn't know what else he did. Another voiced character by Favreau is the narwhal who wants Buddy to find his dad. He also voiced the stop animation animals who said goodbye to Buddy and the rabid raccoon that attacks him on the way to New York. Buddy was supposed to be bullied. In an early draft of the movie, Buddy only left the North Pole because the other elves were making him feel bad. Favreau made sure to get rid of that part because it didn't make sense. Elves in the North Pole are thought to be very happy, so why would they be mean? It's also hard to understand why Buddy was so happy. To grow up, he had to live in a world where everybody was so sweet. They shot scenes in New York. That's not how John Favreau does things. Most movies don't even think about shooting scenes in busy places like New York or LA. He does his best to make everything seem real. When he had to, he packed up the cast and team and went to a famous place in New York. That means that all the scenes that take place in Rockefeller Center, Central Park, and Central Park West were shot there, which makes the movie seem even more real. Yes, Gimbel's is just Macy's. People all over the world know New York City for the famous Macy's store on 34th Street. Getting a job at Gimbel's, the biggest shop in town, is one of the main story points of the movie. If you've been to New York City, you'll notice that the two shops look a lot alike. That's because the movie was shot in Macy's. Favreau couldn't use the name Macy's, so they changed it and changed the signs digitally. Real New Yorkers turned into extras. 
For the last day of filming in New York City, Favreau wanted to show Buddy getting lost on his first day there. Favreau, Farrell, and one cameraman went around the city while Farrell was dressed up and eating gum, going through doors that spin and hopping across the street. Real people from New York City are standing in the background. They have no idea why an adult in tights is being filmed in front of them. Some of the sets were built in a horror factory. Even though Elf isn't a scary movie, some of the sets were built at a place called Riverview Hospital. A haunted old hospital in Vancouver, Canada has been the setting for several horror movies including The X-Files, Final Destination 2, Freddy vs. Jason, and See No Evil 2. At Riverview, these sets for Walter's apartment, Gimbel's toy store, and Buddy's short visit to a jail cell were all built. Baby Buddy is a girl. It was planned for twin boys with curly blonde hair to play the little elf that crawls into Santa's toy bag. What was wrong was that they were awful at acting. It looked like they cried the whole time and couldn't smile when it was time. Favreau fired the twins sorry kids, those are the breaks, and hired three girls to play Buddy's younger sister. No matter what age, show business is tough. Don't forget about Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage had a big role in Elf before he killed his father and took over countries with Khaleesi on Game of Thrones. Dinklage plays Miles Finch, an author. Walt's publishing company hires the author to write a children's book, but Buddy messes it up, thinking he's an elf from the North Pole because he's so small. They really wouldn't be able to get away with that joke these days. Will Ferrell caused accidents Remember how he said the last day of shooting was all about getting those shots of Buddy walking around New York City? The shot where Buddy goes through the Lincoln Tunnel is one of those that everyone knows. Several car crashes were recorded because people were so shocked to see Will Ferrell coming out of the Lincoln Tunnel dressed as an elf. We hope that Ferrell or Favreau paid some of the repairs. Does the snowman look familiar? Does anyone recognize the snowman at the beginning of the movie who gives Buddy advice? That's because it's the same snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Favreau got permission to use the snowman in the movie and paid respect to the figure in a moving way. The snowman finally gets a name in Elf. They named it after the voice actor who does the speech work, Leon Redbone. Also, Leon has spelled backwards Noel. Now that's some Christmas cheer. Will Ferrell wasn't eating cotton balls. In the scene at the doctor's office, Buddy eats all the cotton balls in the office to show off his amazing Elf digestive system. This makes Walter mad. Those things were not cotton balls, but cotton candy balls. When you think about how much sugar Will Ferrell ate for the movie, it sounds like a fun scene to film. The only thing left to ask is what kind of elf food cotton candy is. There aren't that many buttons in the Empire State Building elevators. No one pressed every elevator button in the Empire State Building to make it look like a Christmas tree in that scene. There aren't nearly as many buttons in the real lifts at the Empire State Building. The elevator they used was just a set piece that Favreau made with more buttons than the standard three rows of buttons to make it look nicer. The bridge scene pays tribute to It's a Wonderful Life. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer isn't the only holiday show that Favreau got ideas from for Elf. At the very end, when Buddy walks across the bridge after leaving Walter's apartment, it's meant to look like a scene from It's a Wonderful Life. This is one of the scariest and most important scenes in the history of Christmas movies, and we think Will Ferrell did a great job honoring it. Will Ferrell's brother has a small role. To begin with, we had no idea Will Ferrell had a brother. Patrick Ferrell is also an actor, though he isn't as well known as his brother Will. Patrick mostly has small roles or cameos in Will's movies. He plays the security guy who takes Buddy down from the Empire State Building in the movie Elf. Patrick has also been an anchorman, Knight at the Roxbury, and the other guys. Looks like the Farrell family is naturally good at acting. <laughs>